Our third topic related to the vertebral bones is for us to be able to distinguish between cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebra. Now here you see the, thora the cervical vertebra. Here you see the cervical ones. One of the things you might notice right away is where the superior and inferior articular facets here face anteriorly and posteriorly where they join this way. As you get closer and closer to the skull, you can see that the slope is more horizontal here. So that feature is not so prominent. You can see there's a gradual sloping to where the way the facets meet becomes very much anterior, posterior. But one of the things that makes cervical vertebra very unique is if you look at them, where the transverse processes stick out here, and you can see they're quite small on a cervical vertebra typically, there is a hole that is formed by an extra little piece of bone. And we can see this a little more closely if I get a larger cervical vertebra here. But you can see here on this cervical vertebra that beside each small transverse process, there is what is known as a transverse foramen a hole that is beside the transverse process. Now cervical vertebra have these and none of the other types of vertebra do. So all seven cervical vertebra, yes, no thoracic and no lumbar that look like this. Um, the other thing that is unique in the cervical vertebra are the top two, the superior two vertebra, which are called the atlas and the axis. Now these are separate in the box that you're studying from. And in many ways, these look very different from the other cervical vertebra. Although this is the C2 vertebra. This C2 vertebra has a body, has a transverse process, has a spinous process. Now, typically the spinous process will be divided into two parts like you see here. But otherwise it has all those features. The superior articular facets are oriented superior. The inferior articular facets are order, oriented down. So that's a little bit different. But what's very, very unique 